Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to just thank everyone for being here tonight. It means the just the absolute world to my family uh, with all your support and just everyone being here. And just everything that we're being on with this journey with our, our daughter and just the support. And I'm just glad tonight I get to speak in front of you guys. Because everyone's seeing it through Facebook, but I didn't get to see everyone face to face and really see the journey this girl went on since last camp and just the last year of our life. Um, so just up here today, 2018 was really rough for us. Uh, the seizures for Gracie were getting closer together. Uh, the doctors kept telling her, Gracie is a high risk of death in infants. And we had to come up with a plan of attack of how we're going to handle this and how we're going to go on with her life. And the seizures were getting close together. Uh, as you know, a lot of people have read, when Gracie has her seizures, uh, seizures, there's 45 minutes to an hour long grand mal seizures. And it's just, it's a crazy thing to witness with your own eyes. Um, and they were getting closer together. And it was starting to scare us a lot and we had to make a call of what we're gonna do here and where do we go with our plan of attack. And um, you know, going through that stage, it was hard for us. Uh, there's certain moments in, a, in this journey, and especially through this last year, that have, have changed us as people, and I just try to pass this on, is that God really stripped us down to nothing. And I've gone through my life, and I've always worried about the smallest things, man. The smallest things worried me. And it, it, was, it was just, I've gone through stuff with her now where I'll never forget this, and this is the story I've been telling this year, and this happened to us last year on multiple occasions. But one day I was at the strike zone, it was 5 a.m., and the strike zone phone calls, which never happens at 5 a.m., so as soon as it calls, you know something's wrong. So Joe's like, Grace is in seizure, we go home, and I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. Tell Damien and the boys, see ya, I'm out. So by the time I get home, she's been in big seizure for 20 minutes. She's out of it when I get there. For another 15 minutes, I sat there, we administered anti-seizure gel, and, you know, going into this, we don't know with those seizures if that's her last. So everyone she's having, you don't know if that's going to be her last right there. And the doctors are telling us this, so we're trying to handle this as it's going. But at that present time, I got stripped away of everything I've ever had. And it didn't matter that I played professional baseball. It didn't matter that I work out at 5 a.m. or I've done this with my life or I've done that. At that present time, all I had was prayer. And she quit breathing for a second, she turned blue, and Joe freaked out, and we were just at that point where there was nothing left. And we handed it over and we just started to pray. And she slowly started to come back to breathing, and then we got the ambulance there, and it came back, and we ended up going on with the stuff. But at that point in the time, it changed me as a person, it changed me as a man, it changed us where I just understood it's not about me anymore. And it's what, it, it's about being here for others and shining God's light through your journey. And this little girl's journey is that I want God's light to shine through her. And he has done that. And it's been such a powerful experience and I'm just so honored to be a part of it because it's just been so powerful and an amazing thing to be a part of. But um, as the seizures started getting worse, we had to make the call for brain surgery. The brain surgery Grace had is that they were gonna go in and we flew all over the country and it was because of guys like this. And we, we were able to fly around and get help and get answers and they were gonna go in and disattach the whole left side of a brain. And that's it, it's done. If they cut that, there's no going back. And it was either, okay, what's the first thing to do here? The first thing's trying to take care of the seizures, because if she doesn't, we don't take care of the seizures, there's a chance she's gonna die. So we just like, we've gotta go with the brain surgery, and we prayed about it, and we went full steam ahead. And I tell you what, guys, I sit here tonight, and it gives me chills, but everyone that prayed for my daughter, when we went through that brain surgery, I have been a part of some cool things in my life. That week up in Denver and just that morning that we went back before she had the surgery, everyone was praying at a certain time. It, it was like, I remember it was right before, about 6.45 a.m. And the night before, 
we were going through all the emotions of it. It was so hard. And the doctors, no doctor ever told me that if we had this surgery, a kid was thriving. Like, I just wanted to hear it. I'm an athlete. I wanted to hear that, you know what? If we have this, there's someone out there conquering it. We can do it. But I, we never got that. And the night before, we were, I was kind of a little angry just dealing with the emotions. And I told Joe in the car, I said, I just want to hear a doctor say some kid's striving. And I never use the word striving, by the way. So it was just weird I used it that night. So then I seen all, I was trying to relay the message on Facebook for what she was going through. Because prayer is just a powerful thing when you're going through that. And then the next day when we got there in the, in the hospital room, the doctor came in. And by the way, this doctor was Doogie Hauser. He was 22 years old looking. And he came in and he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, bro, is this for real? But the dude, the dude nailed it. He was rock solid. God sent the perfect person. To he walked in and shook my hand that morning and said, I'm going to take care of your daughter. And he looked me dead in the eye and he had a firm handshake. And that meant the world to me. But three nurses came in that morning. And the last nurse came in and she didn't talk to us. And this was all when everyone was praying. At the same time, everyone was praying for my daughter at this precise time. And the last nurse came in and she didn't say anything. And Joe was on the bed holding Gracie, crying her eyes out. It was just that point in the morning. And she came in and right before she left, she was in there for about 10 minutes. Right before she left, she turned around and she goes, Hey guys, I just wanted you to know this, and I don't know why I'm telling you. She goes, My next door neighbor's kid had this surgery, and he is just thriving right now. And I've, I've never felt that presence before. And, and that, that hope, and when she, I, I tell you what, guys, when we had that surgery, it was like a darkness left us. But you know what? She couldn't walk at that stage. But it was like closing the door on a darkness that had been with us for six years. And then you know what? We go on to the next mountain. But it gave us peace in that moment for those first six years. And just to be here and spend this night with you and be here and just say thank you for just all the prayers, the phone calls and just that stuff. I experienced it and it was absolutely amazing. And that's why I understand today, it's not about Adam, it's not about Joe, it's not about us personally. It's a bigger purpose why we're here today. And just all you guys here, I can never say enough thanks for how you supported my family. And it's, I can't, it's a hard thing for me to say. You guys have taken us under my wing, raising my family in this community. You support me every week. I said I wasn't gonna get choked up, but I'll do my best, all right? But you guys support us every week, and it just shows it's an amazing thing in this community. And these guys say it, and I, this is the best place on earth. And my daughter is a tribute to you guys and the power that this community shows when it comes together and the no-quit attitude. Every one of you have had an influence on my life or on my daughter's life, so you're a part of the journey as well. And it's just an amazing thing. I'm so happy that I get to be here, experience this with you guys, share what we do with Gracie and what she's done with you guys and just say thank you. And you know, what we've done here, I just want to say thank first before I get carried away because I'd like to talk. These guys right here to my right, um, just the most amazing people in the world. My daughter would not have had the opportunity to have the brain surgery she had if these guys didn't come up and do the things they do. They're like family. They, they are a part of this community. They have helped Justin and Jen and they just are, they've done so much stuff and they're the most amazing people and I'm glad they're here and they spend time with you guys but I just want to say thanks man. You guys are the most amazing people. If you do this when you don't have to. You don't have to do this though. You know, they don't have to be here, and I was an ex-player, and just to do that off the field, it's not a coincidence that you look, Alex was a World Series champion, Blake was a World Series champion, Rookie of the Year for the Twins, it's not a coincidence because they're great people. They're getting rewarded for taking care and doing the right things off the field, and it's just a tribute to the game, and I respect you guys so much for doing that. And uh, just welcome to Farmington, and we just love you guys here. So um, just to lead on to our next thing. So Grace's Hope Foundation was started 